Hi, this is David Hillier here and I will be giving you a quick video on factor models and I will be focusing specifically on systematic risk and expected returns. I will also be introducing you to the arbitrage pricing theory and uh, explaining how, in an intuitive sense, how we uh, can derive that. So let's start off by reminding ourselves of how the return in a portfolio can be decomposed. It's decomposed into three distinct elements. We have the expected return component, which is just a weighted average of the expected return on the individual assets in the portfolio. We have the factor risk component, and the to arrive at the contribution of the factor risk to the overall return, then you have a weighted average of the individual asset factor risk exposures um, in that portfolio. And then you've got the third component, which is the unsystematic risk component. And the you just have a weighted average of the unsystematic risks of each of the assets in the portfolio. Now, we assume that this is a large portfolio. It's got N assets. And so the unsystematic risk component will dis disappear, it'll be diversified away because the positive uh, innovations and the negative innovations will offset each other over a large portfolio. But that isn't necessarily the case if you've only got, say, two assets because you're not likely to see um, the, the unsystematic risk component of asset one and the unsystematic risk component of asset two offsetting each other exactly. So you're not going to... Uh, see this disappear with small uh, numbers of assets in a portfolio is only when you've got a large number of assets. But we're assuming here that you do have a large number of assets, you have a large efficient portfolio. And so you're expecting then for this component to be diversified away completely. If that is a situation, then the only risk that matters to an investor is the factor risk and the beta of the portfolio, because the beta of the portfolio is just the weighted average of the individual asset betas. And that takes us to this next graph, because this next graph um, illustrates that relationship. So we'll start off with a, a portfolio that has no risk. And if a portfolio has no risk, it's risk-free. And so if it's risk-free, then the return you'll get is the risk-free return. And that will be equivalent in practice to a government treasury bill, uh, a short-term government uh, debt instrument. This asset here, or this portfolio here, has a beta of two, so it's quite a risky portfolio. And the return in that portfolio is 35. Now, because this relationship is linear, then you can take any uh, any combination of the risk-free portfolio and the risky portfolio to arrive at any other portfolio. So this one here, portfolio P, would be 50% invested in portfolio A and 50% invested in the risk-free portfolio. Now, given that that's the case, the expected return in that portfolio is just 50% of the risk-free rate plus 50% of the return on portfolio A, and that is 22.5%. So these are just, it's just a straight line, and you can create any portfolio on that line that you want from any combination of other portfolios that are on that line. So if you take, for example, portfolio C, Portfolio C can be made up of a combination of portfolio A, investing some money in portfolio A and some money in the risk-free portfolio. But you could also create that portfolio by investing some money in portfolio A and portfolio C. Uh, sorry, portfolio P. Another way you could actually create this portfolio is by borrowing, having a negative weight on the risk-free portfolio and investing that additional money on portfolio P to take you up to portfolio C. So these are correctly priced portfolios because they appear on this line. But you're going to get some portfolios that are not correctly priced, like for example, portfolio B. Portfolio B is an overpriced portfolio. It costs too much. And I'm going to explain that to you. Uh, so let's just assume that we've got a correct valuation here. You've got the expected price in one period from now is 100. You have the price today is 19. We will, we will assume that that's correctly valued. So the expected return on that asset then is 11%. 
let's assume that it's undervalued then. So if it's undervalued, the price today is lower, it's 80. And given that the expected price one period from now is unchanged, that gives us an expected return of 25%. So it's an undervalued security and it has a higher expected return. So that would be somewhere up here then uh, on this. Now, what happens then, that's undervalued. So you would, what you would do is you would want to buy that portfolio because it's undervalued. So you will sell this portfolio. You will use the money you get from selling this portfolio by buying that portfolio. That is an arbitrage portfolio because you're not uh, exposed in any way and you're investing um, in an asset where you've borrowed in an asset that has the exact same risk. So it's, it's an arbitrage portfolio. And you're then putting excess demand in this portfolio. And so the price will start to go up because you're, you're buying it. And because the price is going up, the expected return will drop until you end up getting the portfolio to be priced appropriately and to give you the actual correct expected return. So that's the arbitrage pricing theory in a sense that if you have any under or over pricing, then you either get a, an, an excess demand or an excess supply that will change the return till it appears on that line. And just for completeness sake, here's an overvalued portfolio. Now that is the exact same as portfolio B here. The expected price, the value is going to be unchanged one period from now. We've got uh, the price is overvalued, so it's 95 as compared to 90. And the expected return then, and all you're doing there is just taking 100 minus 95 divided by 95. The expected return is 5.26%. So it's lower than the correct expected return of 11.1%. So therefore, you're going to, that's, going to try and sell that and buy this. Arbitrage will then put that into that line. So any correctly valued assets will be on that line. And that means that the, this model will correctly predict the expected returns on an asset or portfolio. So that is the, the one factor model specification. Uh, it's a straight line. We've got an intercept, which is the risk-free rate. We have the difference in the, so for here it's the difference in the, the return in the portfolio and the return in the risk-free rate multiplied by the beta. And that's what we have here. So it's the risk-free rate plus beta times the expected return in the portfolio minus the risk-free rate. And that is the one-factor model of the arbitrage pricing theory. And you'll see that that looks very similar to CAPM. Except with CAPM, we have the portfolio being the market portfolio. So we can use arbitrage pricing theory and the concept of arbitrage and, and mispricing to arrive at the exact same specification for the market model as the CAPM did. And so we, we, we have effectively got the same formula but using two different theories and in the next video i will be talking more about that and comparing the the real subtle differences between the arbitrage pricing theory one factor market model and the capm the capital asset pricing model okay so um just to to summarize then we've got uh, in this market portfolio you have the beta of one that is the market portfolio so the market return should be having a beta of 1. The risk-free asset should have a beta of 0. Okay, thank you very much.